I'm Jeffrey Sachs, a university professor at Columbia University and president of the United Nations Sustainable Development Solutions Network. The Sustainable Development Goals, or SDGs, really define what we mean by sustainable development and by sustainability. Sustainable development means a, a holistic vision of society in which there is economic well-being, social inclusion and social justice, environmental sustainability, and peace and cooperation globally. So it's a very nice vision. It is the future we want. Sustainability sometimes is taken to mean the environmental part of those four pillars, economic, social, environmental, and peace and cooperation. I like to view sustainable development as the holistic vision of a good society. And I like to think of the sustainable development goals as a kind of roadmap of how we can build the future we want. Ethics it means uh, the ways to behave in order to have a good life. This was the idea of Aristotle already back in the Nicomachean Ethics, uh, written around uh, uh, 330 BC. It's a wonderful book, in my view, the best book on ethics ever written by a philosopher. The idea of ethics is proper behavior. And the idea of Aristotle is use our, our heads, uh, be rational. Think about uh, how we should behave to produce the kinds of outcomes we want. When we are dealing with another person, it's to deal fairly with them. It's to deal honestly with them. It's to understand that if you give, you're likely to receive. It is the golden rule. If we are nations, it is to understand that it's not war of all against all, but a search for peaceful cooperation. I have a, a big argument sometimes with my own government. Uh, the United States, it wants power. I say, you don't want power, you want cooperation. The goal isn't power, the goal is to cooperate to solve problems like climate change or the end of poverty or building the modern, green, clean, digital infrastructure for the 21st century. In most cases, infrastructure needs to stretch across many countries, it's not just within one nation. So rather than talking about making one nation great, we need to talk about how to make the world livable, peaceful, and cooperative. To my mind, that is what ethics is all about. And again, the basic idea of Aristotle in the Nicomachean ethics and in the Western ethical tradition is think. Think of our circumstances, think of the benefits of cooperation, think of the losses that come from being militaristic or belligerent or hostile or cheating or deceptive. Because if we think properly and think rationally and think with understanding of the gains of cooperation, we can really build a better world. The Sustainable Development Goals, 17 of them, came together with targets. 159 of them, and with indicators of how close or far we are from the goals and the targets, more than 300 indicators. The idea is that sustainable development is not only a nice idea, but it is a set of measurable concepts. And by measuring uh, where we stand, whether it's with regard to hunger or with regard to sustainable agriculture or with regard to health systems coverage or with regard to children uh, in school or not in school or all of the other metrics of the SDGs, we can then create public policies and business orientation and business strategies that will carry us on a trajectory to achieve the Sustainable Development Goals. How do we know where we are? Because for each of the areas, if it's climate change, we look to the greenhouse gas emissions. 
Uh, if it's education, we look to the number of children in school. If it is about sustainable agriculture, we look to the sustainability of the farm practices, whether there's deforestation, whether there are nitrogen and phosphorus fluxes from wrong use of fertilizers. Uh, we look to the biodiversity. We look to uh, the uh, health uh, of the ecosystems. So by using scientific-based evidence, we can turn broad concepts into measurable uh, and deliverable trajectories of sustainable development. And that's very exciting. Uh, that means that we can use the SDGs not only as a general orientation, but also as a kind of guidepost or roadmap or a trajectory for where we want to head. Food systems uh, from the time of our species emergence until today is at the absolute center of the challenge of sustainable development and uh, is core to uh, the way that our economy functions and the way that uh, humans impact the environment. What do we want out of our food system? First, we want food uh, on a sustainable basis and not just food, we want healthful food. Uh, we want food that uh, is culturally enriching as well as physically nourishing uh, because food is part of our lives. It's part of our culture. Uh, and so we want uh, a food system that uh, enables people to have healthy lives, <coughs> good nutrition, but we want to make sure that the way that the food is produced is also biophysically sustainable, meaning that it doesn't wreck the land, it doesn't lead to deforestation, it doesn't poison the soils with uh, long-lasting uh, pesticides, uh, it doesn't poison the uh, water uh, with the flows of nitrogen and phosphorus and other chemicals involved in the agricultural process. The problem today is very complex because uh, at least three issues challenge the sustainability of the world's food systems because there are different systems in different parts of the world. First is billions of people are not properly nourished. Uh, the diets are not healthy. People are suffering uh, ill health or even extreme hunger as a result of that. Second, the way that the food is produced is not sustainable in many places in the world. Uh, and that is because the food system itself is leading to massive greenhouse gas emissions, uh, carbon dioxide, nitrous oxide, uh, methane uh, emissions. Uh, it's leading to deforestation. It's leading to pollution of the soils uh, or uh, the water supplies or the air uh, related to farm activities. And the third problem is the food system is extraordinarily vulnerable to the long-term environmental degradation that is underway. In other words, the human-induced climate change is now going to have adverse impacts on the ability to grow food because we're going to have more droughts, more floods more heat waves that put temperatures above the thermal stress limits of our crops. In other words, three big problems. Diets are not healthy. The food system as it now uh, operates is not itself uh, sustainable in the sense of contributing to environmental sustainability. And the food system is vulnerable to the broader environmental changes that are underway. Well, that's a big job to solve those three problems, but that is the challenge of food system sustainability. I am very optimistic. I'm a little worried, but I'm also very, very optimistic because the problems we face can be solved. The more you study them, the more you see how they can be solved. And even some of the biggest challenges that we face have rather direct solutions to them. So the first point of optimism is that our technologies are more powerful than ever. 
And this is a good thing if we use the technologies well. Think of how we can now use big data, artificial intelligence, remote sensing, uh, robotics to improve the sustainability of food production. Precision agriculture is an example of this where far fewer inputs can be used to get even more output because the inputs are used far more precisely and productively. If you think about the digital breakthroughs, if you think about the robotics, if you think about the dramatic reductions of costs of uh, green energy, uh, whether it's uh, solar power or wind power or uh, geothermal energy, uh, if you think about the rapid advances of uh, electric vehicles, which are going to be uh, a lot cleaner uh, and safer than the internal combustion engine vehicles, you see we have so many tools at our disposal. A second reason for optimism is that we can actually define the pathways to success. When you take a big challenge like human-induced climate change, it may seem overwhelming. But if you analyze it carefully and then study precisely what can be done, you make what I like to call a pathway. Uh, that is not a solution overnight, but a series of specific measures that can take us from today to mid-century to the decarbonization of the world energy system. We have wonderful studies now, for example, by the International Energy Agency of reaching net zero by 2050. So for each of our big challenges, whether it is the food sector, whether it is energy decarbonization, whether it is uh, ending extreme poverty, whether it is ending these wars uh, that are bedeviling the planet, which also have their analytical solutions because those wars arise from politics and can be solved at the negotiating table, not on the battlefield, but at the negotiating table. So all of this says we can use our heads, uh, we can uh, identify how actually to harness our know-how to achieve what we want to achieve. The third reason for optimism is that we have in our human nature, in our spirit, the capacity to cooperate. We also have the other. We have the capacity to fight, uh, to be bloody-minded, uh, to be stupid, uh, to be selfish, but we do have the capacity to cooperate. And more and more, we are building global institutions that can help us to do that. I devote a great deal of my time and have done so for the last quarter century to the United Nations because I believe that the United Nations is our generation's manifestation of how we can cooperate at the global scale with the 193 UN member states. I'm excited by the fact that with all the differences in the world, the 193 nations were able to come together on September 25th, 2015, and adopt 17 sustainable development goals. And I take uh, uh, some great uh, relief and satisfaction in the fact that a few weeks after adopting the sustainable development goals, the same nations with their representatives met in Paris and adopted the Paris Climate Agreement. And now the world's governments are going to meet in the summit of the future to help build a new strengthened multilateralism for the next three quarter century of our 21st century. So there's hope because there are people of goodwill all over the world that want to cooperate, that want peace, that want to use our heads, our scientific knowledge, our technology, in order to create a, a meaningful, uh, healthful, beneficial future for humanity. So we have the technologies, uh, we live in a rich world, we have the pathways for success, 
And we have people of goodwill all over the world. So I encourage everyone to study the problems, understand them, understand the solutions and work together all over the world from community to nation to region to uh, the global scale so that we succeed in building the future we want. I, I wrote The End of Poverty uh, in 2005, actually, in a year uh, that was uh, uh, to make poverty history was the slogan of uh, 2005 at the summit meeting in uh, Glen Eagles uh, uh, in Britain uh, that hosted a session on ending poverty. And I believed then, of course, I believe today that Poverty has no place in a world of wealth, in a world of such technological sophistication. We can end extreme poverty and we could easily do it. I said that it would be done basically by now, by 2025. Some places did that. China went from being completely impoverished in 1980 to ending extreme poverty by 2020, a kind of proof of concept. But we have not had the global cooperation the focus, the peaceful cooperation that we need for success. So my disappointment since 2005 is how many wars we have been fighting, especially my own country, the United States, which I think needs to be much more peaceful, much less militaristic, uh, much less uh, talking about NATO this and war this and threats here, but peaceful cooperation, because that's how we will really end poverty. Welcome to the master's program in sustainable agri-food systems management.